So once you once you um, once you've navigated to Firebase.Google, um, you'll be presented with a screen like similar to this. So I have past previous projects that I've created. Um, so just ignore that. But what you would do thereafter is you'd click this button that says Add Project, right? Um, so Firebase is going to ask you to enter a project name. So it doesn't necessarily matter what you enter here. But yeah, guys, I'm jumping ahead of myself. So Firebase is a NoSQL object oriented um, database. It allows you to store um, objects, it allows you to store data, it allows you to store uh, images, everything online basically. So we connect Firebase to our app and we use it as our, our, our cloud database. So all the ob all the ob oh, sorry, excuse me, all the objects and um, data that we need to save will be saved using Firebase. The reason we do it like this is we're trying to avoid using SQL. Um, SQL can be a little trouble for those who never play around with it. So hence we're using Firebase and it's persistent. It is free. Um, we, um, we can create over 20 projects. I know I think I have like probably 30 projects on my Firebase free account. Um, so yeah, check it out. It's pretty cool. I like it. Um, there are alternatives as well. But in this, in this a tutorial we're going to use five so firstly enter your project name um, so you can call it whatever you want then it's gonna then press the continue button it's gonna ask if you want to add google analytics to your project um, you can do this if you plan on releasing a project i'm not then click obviously create project give it some time it'll load it can take a little bit of time, but yeah. Guys, also you're gonna be presented with two options, but I'll I'll explain them as we as we see them. Click continue, and you'll see that I'm in, uh, this is the screen that I'm taking to. So this is our data data. This is our Firebase um, home screen. Very simple, very easy to to use and understand. Um, so I will try and explain a little bit. Uh, the first thing you want to do is just cancel this thing. Um, so we have an option of adding um, or connecting our iOS app, our Android app, and our web app. Um, so if if you were going to distribute this application on iOS only, you would click here. If it was Android only, you would click here. If it was web only, you would click here. If you want to distribute your application to all mm -hmm. platforms, uh, meaning you want to connect your database, your Flutter app, um for ios and, and android you'd have to click both of these buttons so i'm going to start with android but i'm not going to cover ios but you click this button here um it's going to ask you to register your app right so it wants you to enter a package name so for us to get our package name um what you have to do is Open up your project, click where it says Android, click where it says app, click where it says source, click where it says main, yeah. click where it says Java, IO, and Co no, I'm sorry. What is it? Kotlin. No, it's Kotlin. Go inside Kotlin, right? Double click, double click main activity. Right, and you should see this line of code here. So this is your package name. So just copy this. My PC is being a little slow. So just copy this, and um, go back to Firebase. Paste the chair. Right. So I'm just gonna say one, right? Because I've already added this project to, to my Firebase. So I was gonna get a duplicate error, but um, don't add a one in your case. And it's gonna ask you for your app nickname. You don't need, this is optional. You don't really need to do this. You can leave that as is. Um, yeah, you can leave that. It's gonna ask for a debug signing certificate SHA1 key. So this is 
in the event that you want to use the Google sign in option. So I'm sure you guys have used apps where you don't necessarily need to sign up and register. You just press the Google button and it automatically logs you in using your Google account. So if ever I would want to um, add that feature to my app, I will need what's called a SHA1 key. Um, yeah. So to get that SHA1 key can be a little bit, not, it's not really that tedious, but it can, it can, um, yeah, it can be a little tedious actually. But uh, so I'm going to skip this for now. But if you guys want to add that Google sign in feature, um, just Google search how to add, how to find your SHA1 key for Flutter. Next step is you're going to click register app. Right, so give it some time. And it's going to generate what's called a Google services.json file. Um, so we're going to download this file. So just click download. Um, and it's going to generate this file, right? Um, right click, click show in folder. Right. And you're actually going to copy this file and paste it in a fol this folder, the, fold the Android folder that says app. So paste that file here inside you, right? Um, so I'll just say paste. Cool. Thereafter, we can go move on to the next step. Yeah, as I said, guys, just make sure you put it in your app folder. So you go to Android app and paste the Google services.json inside your app folder inside the Android directory. Thereafter, you're going to click next and you're going to be introduced with several options like this. Um, so first, first things first, um, copy this line of code that says class path com Google. This here, just copy it. Right? Minimize. Wait, let me see something. French left. So we have to add this to our what's called a grade, a Gradle file. Um, so this is our Gradle file. So let me just start over. So let's say it's closed like this, the directory. I click Android and project level Gradle is this one. That's the first one you see after you um, expanded the Gradle, the Android um, package. Thereafter, you would come to dependencies and you would paste that line of code we just copied here, right? You don't have to refresh anything and just leave it like that. So just look for dependencies and refresh. Thereafter, um, so just usually ask just to check if Google is there by your repos, but by default, it should be there. So you don't have to worry too much about it. The next important line you want to Take in consideration is this app label build Gradle. So you're gonna copy this. No, sorry, is it this one? It's this one. Apply plugin. Uh, you're gonna go to your app Gradle file. So your app Gradle file can be found inside your app folder, and you should see a, a build dot Gradle file. And scroll, scroll where you see where it says apply plugin, like here, and just. Paste that new line of code that we got here, right? Thereafter, um, you can press next. So we have we've successfully added Firebase um, to our project. Actually, why did I should have added? Wait, guys, so I actually, I just want to regenerate actually my, um, okay. Okay, so I, I just want to regenerate my, um, what do you call it? My JSON file. Let's just do this. So I'm trying to just regenerate my, my Google services so that I can also just show you guys as I um, as I move with you guys. So just give me a minute. 
I forgot that this is actually a, a, a practice project, so I actually can add it. So that's good, actually. I can add it. So let's actually let's do it right and add it. So I'm going to download this. I'm just going to delete this one. Just give me a moment, guys. Let me actually do it right with you guys. Paste this here. Edit. Add. Also, don't worry about these areas that you get, right? It's it's okay. It's, it's you'll still be able to run your project, so don't worry about the areas that you get. They really should update that. I don't know why. Okay, we've done this. We've done this, right? We've done this. We've done this. Next. Yeah. So then I can just click continue to console. Okay. So, guys, you can add as many Android apps as you want to your application. So, let's say in the event you had four apps that need to share the same database, you can add all those projects together. Um, cool. So, next thing you want to do is you want to go to authentication. You want to go to sign in method. And you want to enable this email password combination. This will allow our users to sign in. So you have a lot of ways you can sign in users. You can sign in by GitHub, Twitter, Facebook, Game Center. So Firebase does integrate with a lot of other APIs, which is which is really cool. Um, you uh, typically you wouldn't want to use the manual sign up way of collecting an email and a password. Um, it can defer users. And usually adding a Google sign in does increase your conversion rate in terms of getting people to interact and sign in with your app. So the more sign-in methods you have, the better always. So the next step is you're gonna click okay, no. You're gonna scroll down to the real-time database. So Cloud Firestore is Firebase's new way of um, creating uh, databases. It is a little bit better in terms of the querying. You can query much, much better. It works via what's called documents and collections. But in our case, we're only going to be interested in the real-time database. The real-time database is a little bit more beginner-friendly, but it does sac sacrifice a little bit of functionality. So click Create Database. Um, you're going to be presented with a screen like this. So select Start in Test Mode. So basically this allows anyone to read and write um, to my database. If it's in lock mode, only authenticated users can write. So when you release your app, um, make sure that it's on lock mode because you don't want obviously anyone being able to manipulate your, your data. But since we're only debugging and testing, I'm gonna select test mode. I'm gonna select enable. And this is what you should see. So we've created our first database. Um, yeah, great. So let's just go to rules just to confirm that we are using the right rules. Okay, so our rules are set to public. Um, yeah, just make sure that it does say rules read through, write through, or else you won't be able to write any data to your database. Okay. So now what we are going to try and do is um, map our login and our registration screen right in the event that our user needs to log into the application so go to go to register go to your register page Um, once you have to register page, you're going to have to import some Firebase um, methods. 
Okay, so I'm going to say import. I'm going to import Firebase auth. Right? So Firebase auth allows me to create users and sign in users as well. And once I've done that, I'm going to scroll down. Well, actually, I don't have to scroll down. I can just do it. Here. And I'm going to declare a new method. So uh, we haven't necessarily um, uh, used methods and functions. So this is, I guess, an introduction to that. Um, so let me just take a sip of tea. Hold on. Um, so we're going to declare a method. The method we're going to declare is going to be of type future. Future basically is how would I explain future? Future is like um, a function you know, that you can that you create, and it returns a value that um, is is still to be returned. If that makes sense. So any any method that you declare that's of type future. You, it means basically you have to wait for the results to finish before it gets returned. Yeah. So my future is going to take what's called an auth result. An auth result is Firebase's um, way of communicating to you if uh, a registration or a login was successful. So this object basically has all the details in terms of um, my login status right so i'm going to call this method sign up and i'm going to say string email and this is string password right so this this method is going to take an email and a password so guys, if you want to sign in a user to Firebase, you have to declare a Firebase object called Firebase auth. We'll make, we'll make it private. You have to instantiate set object. And then you have to return Um, so just another another quick fact um, if you deal with futures you have to make your um, function async 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 basically means run in the background so or run on another thread so this method's not going to run on my main UI thread it's actually going to run on um, another thread so I'm going to say return wait underscore and I'm gonna say auth dot create user with email and password it's gonna automatically generate this line of code and it takes an email and a password parameter so I'm gonna obviously pass the email um, parameter there and then the password parameter there so this this just so in just two lines of code we've been able to create it this is how you create a user using Firebase. how easy is that so now i'm going to take my sign up method and i'm going to scroll all the way down to my button right and i'm going to say sign up right so since it's a future future does have a a method called um then right so i'm going to say dot then I'll explain. So that then basically means once my method has completed running, execute this um, chunk of code. So my method returns an auth result. Remember, I made a future that returns an auth result here. So basically, when my function's finished executing, it's going to generate an auth result that's been um, populated by Firebase. Then I am going to say, then I'm going to say, 
So I have to pass an e email and a password here. Yeah? So now I just have to think, where do I, where can I get my email and password? Remember I declared all these controllers and these controllers allow me to get the inputs that my user typed in. So I'm going to pass an email controller and a password controller, right? But well, no, uh, just say dot text, dot text is the string, basically a string. So basically this, is, so it's going to pass these two methods inside my future method and then it's, it says um, once my sign up method is completed then execute whatever line of code is in here so i only want to go to the home screen once my user has registered right so then i'm going to put this line of code here All right cool but now just another thing is what if our passwords don't match what if our user and what if the user enters um two passwords that don't match so we obviously want to test that um here what i'm going to do is i'm using i'm going to use an if statement and i'm going to say if repass controller does not equal password controller and just say dot text um, a common mistake is people forget to say dot text for their controllers so basically what this does is it matches the two passwords for my registration page and checks if they're the same else and add an else and take this method and paste it in here so it will only get executed in the event that the two passwords are the same um, yeah else um, so let's see actually actually no guys um, not like this just delete this this is just the logic doesn't make sense so if my pass controller if my password controller text and my real pass are not the same so this this is not what i have, I have to return an error i have to return an error so i'm just gonna create something that we're gonna be making use of quickly I know it seems like I'm jumping around, but I think we just need this this file. So create a new dot file, call it helper. This dot file is gonna be used for like um, what do you call it? Like uh, message boxes or error messages. That's what we're gonna use it for. So we're just gonna call it that. Um, call it show toast. String message. Right. And um, since we declared a plugin called Flutter Toast, um, we can actually make use of it. So we say Flutter Toast dot show toast. And it takes a message, right? So I'm going to pass a message, this message here. Understood? I hope you guys understand. I'm also just formatted so it's neat. Okay, my, since I'm running my application, it is a little slow. But Thereafter, there's a couple of parameters you can just play, play around with. So I'm going to use toast length. Toast dot length. Short. Gravity, it has gravity as well. The reason why it's so slow is because I'm running, I'm trying to debug as well. So it's really 